The Hebrew text in the Bible has hidden formats. By revealing these formats, I will prove the first writer's words were hidden from you. These formats look like poetry. I would like to show you the Twelve Commandments listed in Exodus chapter 20, verses 1-17. through 17. These commandments are the agreement between our Creator and His nation Israel, and they agreed with our Creator that any father of a family or his wife who did not obey any of these Twelve Commandments, our Creator demanded them to bring him a sin offering to their priest to be forgiven of their sin. Thus, our Creator defined the word sin as not obeying any one of these Twelve Commandments. Now I want to show you how I changed one word in Exodus 20, verse 26, the word bars to arches. And the words now reveal the style of the roof for his tent for meeting with him and the roof style for the house for meeting with him. So who has been editing the first writer's words to hide this knowledge from you? Let me show you their words from the 1611 preface which the translators inserted into the front of the English King James Bible in 1611. They gave four reasons for themselves to edit the Bible. The one I want to show you is the red arrow at the top, which points to the third reason. By the light and feeling we attained unto ourselves. The next red arrow down points to them giving the title, The Divine, to a clerk, named Gregory. Now the next block of words, they point out they were happy that the first emperor of Rome changed our creator's calendar by setting the year to the course of the sun. Behind this text means Nebuchadnezzar ordered his kingdom to follow our creator's calendar when he stopped eating grass. Did you notice how the letter S in sun is capitalized? This is to give respect to the Egyptian sun god, Ra. And you can also see they have an Egyptian obelisk in the Vatican's courtyard. The last arrow points to your reward for studying the Bible. Your reward is to have a fellowship with the saints and a participation of a heavenly nature that will never fade away. In their own words, I will say those men were not seeking to help people who are seeking knowledge from the first writers writing in the Hebrew text. I have an old Bible program that I use to help find a better word from the New American Standards 1977 Concordance, which has the number of times they use that English word in a parenthesis for that Hebrew word. My revealing of the first writer's words will make the text read like the first writer had wrote them, and their words will take your belief to trusting our Creator. Um, but I got time. Um, this will be Psalm 16, and I want to start off by just uh, going over what I usually do at the beginning here. And that is uh, the first words here uh, with the apprentices around them. That is text that comes from other uh, manuscripts when they went through and looked all of them. I don't know, they got something like 25,000 of these or something or more. And it's... It's something that they found in number one, and not all of them, but they felt like they have to add these. Uh, they're wrong about what they're what they're. This was added, so I'm removing it, and that's my uh, editing to say that I'm going to get rid of that. Now, um, I should say here, um, what you see up at top, that is the list of what I'm going to do. Okay. I'm going to find the shortest verses, then I'm going to try putting them in groups, and then I'm going to go look uh, for um, more mistakes or errors that or mistakes that they made and explain them. So uh, just bear with me, and I will start going uh, through the text here. 
Oh, um, you see the word uh, here, or the two letters YV, and that's because that is um, when you search for our Creator's name, you'll find that it is these four letters, and nobody really knows how to say his name. But Strong's give us uh, two uh, names that he would say that this is the best he knew at that time in 1860 or whatever. Uh, the Hebrew people will tell you when you study their language that uh, the late H on the end is sometimes silent, so you will see people pronouncing it like this. No, I'm saying it's just these two letters is the best way to, dis, to or as close as we're going to get to saying his name. Uh, their Hebrew letters has no J, no O, no W. So therefore there is no Jehovah or anything with an O like this, Yehovah. And there is no W where they put a W here. Uh, I just used these two letters. Now, again, they didn't do us any favors for the simple fact their 1611 translators replaced his name 6,825 times for two titles. For titles. It couldn't decide on one, but two titles. And I know that today people think uh, the title God is his name. So the here you got to understand... Uh, this is all the numbers that are added up together to uh, get to 6,825 uh, 6, times. Now, even that's a lie because that's what they note in their Bibles that the, all the capital lettered uh, God and Lords are meaning uh, these four letters. Well, over here, when I click on it, it's this name here. 48 other times. Uh, this is Jesus' name, and I will get into that uh, as I go through the text. When I uh, know that Jesus is appearing, I will explain that. But other than that, that's how I start with uh, the title. I go through, and, I, and I'm going through, and today, oh, today I've got the program here. So, let me see here. Um, this is not, this is Psalm 7. I need, we're on 16. So when I click on here, you can see it over here. But, where is... No, that's 15. That's not 16. I'm going to say I'm, guess I'm too older today than I was yesterday. Um, here, when I click on the title God, uh, you don't see it over here. How come? If I click on this word, let's see, preserve. Yeah, I was going to say, this is... It was strange that it didn't highlight. I just got my computer back, so I had a problem with this one. It was crashing. So, but I also notice here we have another title, Lord. And this is Anne. Now, these words are not maybe spelled exactly like the way you would see them in the Strong's book. Um, or so, Strong's Concordance. Uh, this is the New American Standard Concordance, uh, but they give us the number, how many times they used this word or this word or this word for this word here. So to own the copyrights to the concordance, they had to spell these words differently. So that's why they done that. But here, the title is L. Now, I can show you that I've done a study on every one of these. Um, oh, I'm trying to think that's a screensaver here. So let me, I'm going to have to get used to this. I got a, I usually have that mouse on the other chair, arm of the chair here. So that, that's a problem today. I didn't realize that until now. Let me see if that, 
will that work? Will that get over here? Oh boy, I can see a problem when I get up. I'm going to drop that mouse right off the bat onto the floor. So if I do it like that, I guess I will take notice. Um, when I did a, a word search, where's that? Uh, on Elohim, you can see that uh, I checked all these verses, and I took I put in the words "Our Creator." And you can see why, because when you put the title Our Creator in here, he's creating, creating, creating. Now, the title God, they do have uh, this word L. Okay, here it is, here it is, here it is. The problem with that is it's not always used for God. See, this L is used for God many times and especially one time for this guy's name. Um, but the thing here is, is you can see up here when they did the uh, numbers, the 12 was missing. So I don't know if he felt that he put it together here, those words here, uh, or not. But that was just strange that it did. But the one that actually uh, is used mainly for a god is uh, 240 or 204 times in a few times. And this is in also for the title, oh, title Mighty One. So, but if you look at these other two, look at all these words here that they're using that aren't true for L, okay? Now that's suspicious, but what I've noticed when I go look for those verses, it is at a time in the text that now there's other foreign people on the promised land that they didn't, they started allowing people to live on their land, selling their inheritance and stuff like that. Uh, and then it was their God, these new people come in, and that's how they had have to start comparing our creator to their God to our God is the way they would do that. So it's it's a fault or it's a part of the story or understanding when that text is actually really written and by who it would be written by. It's at a later time. So um, I, I'm going to leave it as title God right now as it is and then go start going through the text. Now when it comes to the title Adne, Okay, here, let me get that because um, Lord is not as used as much as I thought, but this is the other title. And you see down here how many times, and it's mainly referring to um, like a master or owner, and that's true what the title Lord does. But you only see it used four times to represent our creator, um, or this would be Jesus. So that's kind of odd how they stuck in two titles for our creator. But the word Lord uh, giving to our creator for that title, that usually comes up when um because it can be used as lord when someone is talking to that it's like a personal guidance over a people you can use it as, you know like something like a master so what i'm going to do here is uh just um mention that but right now you can see this is a capital l lord did I do that, or is that in the text? No, that's in the text this way. Um, that's in the text, as you can see. Where is it here? Right here, when I click on that. And like I said, oh. Now here, it's used 400. Now how come I don't have that here? Oh, I do. I didn't point to it at the top. 
Okay, I see. I'm sorry. Uh, yes, there. 460 times me and Lord is our creator. I went to this one here for four. This is another title for Lord. Two different Hebrew words. Sorry, I got caught up. Um, and what I'll do here is now that I um, got explained the titles, I will start just quickly going for the verses, and I'm going to clean these up and say I don't need to explain what I'm doing here. Now, uh, what I'm going to do, though, real quick, because if you're new here, I'm looking for this type of uh, formats, one of them. Uh, this is very popular in Psalms, this uh, three-verse group. And if you notice, I'm giving respect to our Creator by using all purple um, capitalized, capitalized letters so you know it's our Creator. And that's tied to whatever He said or a prophecy that He said or uh, His possession or His creation, such as um, if He says... Uh, he is going to send his Holy One, which is Jesus. I will use the word Holy Ones completely, or not completely, all capital, in uh, violet or purple. I will highlight some of those letters in red so the reader understands. But that's how I'm giving our Creator um, honor and respect. And I can see I've done that down at the bottom towards the word glory. So... The thing there is, is Jesus will be noted with uh, the red uh, letters, and uh, the first letter will be capitalized. Okay, just to, so you know that right now I'm using this as Jesus, although I don't know if that's true or not. Um, but that's, I will color that if I need to. Preserve me, God. Now, I don't like the word preserve because I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, that would bless. Okay. Anyways, uh, I say to you, I say to YV, you are my Lord. Now, see, this is now this is going to say that he's a title. So I'm going to bring that word all the way up to respect our Creator, and that's not Jesus. Now, I have no good beside you, and I don't understand that type of speech. Uh, I have no good besides you. Um, it's almost like I have no God besides you. I mean, he's going to talk about our creator. As for the saints, now they didn't have saints at the time, so this word was not even in the Hebrew language. Okay? So you got to understand when you're reading a lot of these um, Hebrew, they didn't have, they're inserting a lot of words that we use today for you to understand the text. So I will find the correct Hebrew word and put that back in. But they didn't have saints at that day. Um, example, when you write according to our creator, uh, the who is a righteous, someone like a Moses or Noah, they put our Creator above themselves and above the family. Uh, our Creator comes first. And then that, He is very righteous, okay? Now, just below that, that a person would be a, very obedient to our Creator. And a little bit below that would be, um, oh, I'm trying to think uh a word, but the object is here is that our Creator uh, has kind of defined what the word righteous is. Okay, you can't turn to a secular dictionary when um, you're looking at the text here and trying to uh, understand it. You have to go through the dic go through the Bible, and as you learn, example, our Creator defined the word man as when he says I created male and female man or or is it the other way I created man male and female 
So you who are saying um, the word man to mean a male, you're not following our creator. So um, your Christianity, if you are a Christian, you're weak in that. Uh, you need to actually start speaking with the respect that our, and honor that our creator told you how to, to define words, not a secular dictionary. And there are many words that uh, I will go through here and point out um, how our creator or even Jesus has defined the words. For the saints who are on the earth, not who are in the earth, now that would be, does that mean they're dead? Are the majestic ones in whom is all my delight? Well, that's, their, your delight should be, or your happiness should be that you're obedient to your creator, not majestic ones who are in these saints. Um, they don't allow you to enter into heaven. So there's something wrong with this writer uh, claiming these because they can't be majestic, okay? You can't be a godly person or you cannot be a holy person. Those words are related to Jesus as being the highest, highest male, okay? And um, to be godly, that takes away from the title God. Okay, uh, you cannot create, so how can you be uh, have the term God connected to you? So the words need to be removed and corrected. Um, the sorrows of those who have bartered, the sorrows of those, the sorrows of those. And uh, we're going to, it sounds like it's going to like hesitate. So when it hesitates, I break it because it's going to end up looking like a form, a poetry like format. So who have bartered for another God will be multiplied. I will not pour out their libation of blood nor will I take their names upon my lips. Wivy is the portion of my inheritance. No, that's not correct. In my cup, Wivy, you did support my lot. Um, that's, there is a lot of loose usage of words here in this psalm. The lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. They're on the promised land. You can't, <laughs> and the promised land is your inheritance. So my portion of my inheritance is given by our creator. Uh, that's why they consider um, our creator created them as a nation, which that, points out the difference that they aren't like everybody else on earth. So, um, anyways, I will bless Wivy. Now, that's just a flat out lie. You cannot bless our creator. See, the, the, this person who's writing this text is completely using words uh, for falseness. You... How can you bless our Creator? What does the word bless actually mean? Our Creator blesses those who are very obedient to Him, meaning He allows their life to be, um, at this time, it would be a good life, a healthy life, a prosperous life, uh, have many children, um, able to, uh, what we would call ease of living today. Uh, but the only thing is, is I will bless wifey. That, that can't be done, okay? So I'm not even going to try to correct that part.
but maybe YV is this here is connected to this. YV has consulted me. Indeed, my mind instructs me. And, and how come that? How come that is? Oh, do I have capital? Yeah, that's why I've got all capitals on. Um, indeed, my mind instructs me in the night. Now, that doesn't make any sense. Our Creator teaches, and Jesus also tells us that in the night, one can cannot run, they will stumble. So you're not really be able to understand the truth as much as in the uh, daylight that you're able to run. Um, so this one here, uh, indeed my mind, inst he's saying his own mind instructs him. He's not giving credit to our creator who, is te who teaches him. So that's pretty odd to be said what, how he's saying this. I have set YV continually before me. Now, who's he talking to? I'm trying to figure out this writer as I'm going, and it's just not making sense. I Because this would he would be trying to tell us. But he says, YV, let's put this, YV counseled me. Indeed, I can't even put this one together. Indeed, in my mind, he... In my mind, he inst instructs me. Why he counseled me? In my mind, he instructs me. It would. It has to be something like this. And in the night, that can't be true. Uh, you're awake during the day. If you're sleeping, uh, you know what sleep is like. How? How? Where'd you receive your instructions? You know, it's this. The testing that he does to us during the daylight uh, and gives us challenge and he gives us our thoughts then and he's really given us I'd like to try to say two two paths of thought one will be a lesser and you never want to take the lesser thought you always want to take the other thought or the high road and then keep climbing up and you get closer to our creator you keep taking the lesser thought you you uh, start going farther away from our creator. So why have he counseled me? And in my mind, he instructs me. In my mind, he instructs me. Okay. I would say this, but I'm adding. So I will add, and I will highlight it in red right now, but it will be italic. That way, when I take off the coloring and get rid of those and clean it up, uh, the italic will be the words that you'll know that I'm uh, editing. Uh, so, and if it's him who's instructing, then it's like this. I have set YV continually before me. How can you set YV continually before you? I have set YV's uh, commandments before me, um, but not continually before me. That just, because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Now, he's not at anybody's right hand. If anything, we're... we're being guided by him, he is at my right hand. Therefore, my heart is glad. And my, and my glory rejoices. My flesh will also dwell securely. Dwell is usually the word live. Okay. So let me show you that in the... T um, here, this would be what I've got to look and read where I was at. This is 9. Verse 9 isn't here, so 
get over here, uh, dwell. Now you'll see down here, oops, yeah, I forgot to set this up. Dwell is inhabitant lives, lives here. So settlement, uh, living, but they, they change the word to dwell, which are dwellers. Um, but I'd like to change it to what it means, a living. Let's not try to put two words into the text for what it really means. That way I'm not confusing um, the reader by having a double meaning for many different words. The Hebrew had a simple language. So let's make the text as simple as I can, or I like to make it as simple as I can. So I will put the word living, live, I will live securely. Now, this means when I'm editing like this, I'm going to just change the word because it's an example I could because they could have used the word living themselves uh, or live. And if it's a like within a far shadow of that word, I will underline it. And if I'm completely getting rid of this word and saying it's a complete mistake, I will put in the word and I'll make it all gray and italic in that way, it's knowing that I've added a word uh, to the text. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol. You will not abandon my soul to Sheol. Neither will you allow your Holy One to undergo decay. Now see, though, this would be Jesus. So um, I have to say this is red. Well, I got this. So, allow your Holy One to undergo decay. Now, the thing here is, what does this mean when we already know the story about Jesus? Um, so, let me try to explain here. When Jesus' body died on the cross, he ascended directly into heaven, and they, the earth shook, and they seen souls come up from the, uh, the graveyard. Okay, so how can I say that undergo decay? Um, that's kind of odd, because here... We also know Jesus came back on earth and he walked around with them saying, see, I am still here and things like that. So does that mean to undergo decay? If this is not a prophecy statement, this is not something our creator is saying. This is someone just randomly blurting out words that a lot of them don't make sense <laughs> um, to say to go under undergo decay. So those words can't be truthful at this time. But um, I'm going to leave them there, but they're very, very questionable as to saying that they're correct. You will make known to me the path of life. And it would have to be uh, your path for my life of life. It would have to be my life. And this would not be the word of. So I'm going to change the word of to my life. And it has to be your path because that means our Creator gave them statutes to live by, then commandments that are very important. They're the agreement between the people in the Sinai and their descendants that they must obey the 12 commandments, just as Jesus did, that um, you have to uh, stay uh, obedient to our Creator because He defined these uh, commandments 
they needed uh, to, if you didn't follow any one of them, you needed to atone for your action of not obedient, of uh, uh, being obedient to them. And you needed to bring a sin offering. And when our creator says the word sin offering, he's defining those 12 commandments as what is sin is not obeying one of the 12 commandments that you've seen in the beginning of the, uh, the intro to this. Um, so the thing here is, uh, this is his path. Um, now it could mean that this is Jesus's path for his life, for my life, make known to me his path for for my life but you still have to buy a bed by his path so i'm going to leave it as our creator's path and then note it that it's not jesus by bringing them all capital letters your presence is fullness of joy now that um your presence is my in this uh, fullness i'm not sure of joy why would that be fullness of joy um in your right hand now there are pleasures forever no, that's, that's, that's more stupid speaking, okay? And I'm afraid that when I'm looking and reading and saying that, I've never said that that many times uh, to go through a psalm yet. So I'm really discouraged that this psalm is not truly written by uh, a true believer at that time. The words are being used so wrong so many times preserve me god for i take refuge in you just because i you take a refuge in him that's not really true truth of what it, you're supposed to be obedient to him um there's many like i said statutes that must be followed two of them um for the common people and there's statutes for the priest and then there's the uh, 12 commandments and then there's um laws and then there are many guidelines that would be some who are claiming as laws but they're just guidelines uh to live by um i said to wivy you are how did he talk to our creator? I said to Wivy, you are my Lord. I have no good beside you. How do you, how would you talk to our creator and say, I have no good beside you? I mean, to say something like that, they don't understand. <laughs> this person would not be speaking to our creator like that. How would he, you're comparing our creator to a person on earth? Uh, you're, you know, that I uh, have no good beside you. Um, if you're relating it to how people live onto another God, I have no good beside you. That doesn't even sound good. Um, this is, this person, now, if it was a priest, let's give some examples here. There are only a few ways that the text is going to be actually written. One, by the king ordering, or the, the king or judge, the judge first, then king, would order this is so important that it must be written for the people to understand and learn from that this this what happened to us and our creator came and gave us 
his favor and helped us out. And it was vis and it was known uh, pretty much through a prophet that the story uh, how this how it happens. The second person would be a prophet. He is the one who is actually speaking with our creator. So here I said to YV, now this would be a prophet. Now, or a priest who goes into the tent of meeting to talk to our creator and ask for an atonement because above the chest, there are two um, angels on the side that their hands are forward and they're holding a flat surface, what is called the mercy seat. And our creator is above that area and he is either speaking to them or he has shown himself as a light. Um, it will, some text later can still be found, uh, you shine upon us, okay? In John, you start reading about um, his, Jesus came from uh, his light to become our light on earth. So they knew our creator was a being of light, okay? Whether he showed himself um, to prophets in visions at night as a light, um, which we can, I can show you in Daniel. There is text that that's how uh, Daniel experienced his vision. Um, but they've chopped up the text so much that you wouldn't understand our creator as a being in light. Um, in Genesis, you got to understand we have an emptiness and our creator is hovering, okay? That's the best way I can even say it. And that's coming from the King James word. This is the New American Standard. But the object is, is that you understand that there's emptiness and then there's our creator, which makes the emptiness his, okay? Everything is our creator then, and he is. But he's able to see because he's creating things. So that's the, he's his he's got his being as light, and he's creating things so he can see them, and that's one of the best ways I can say that when you look at Genesis in some of the words that you understand that he's a being of light. Um, so preserve me, God, for I. Take refuge in you. I said to YV, you are my Lord. I have no good beside you. I have a hard time understanding how uh, even a prophet could say something like that. A priest, a priest, look, we went, I, just uh is it Psalms 14 or 13? I'll have to look and check. But it, we have, when I edited the text and it was talking about someone who could um, live in his tent uh, and then live in his holy hill, I realized it meant by his holy hill, and then it means not live in his tent, but work in his tent to serve. Then we knew. Then I knew that the text was coming from a priest. But afterwards, after I started stumbling around the words, just the little words first to make it correct, built up the knowledge that it meant the priests that were serving in there in in his uh, courtyard and going in and seeing him. Um, that the text was telling what kind of life that they lived. And that was a uniqueness to understand uh, the priest and how, because you have to understand, only the most obedient to our creator among all the Levites that are living in all the tribes were chosen to serve for our creator. 
So people had to know you as one that dedicated your life as our creator is number one, not anything that you think is right. You are paying attention to our creator and putting everything he has given us first in all your thoughts and judgments are him first, then maybe your family, then himself. And that was unique to understand that um, most obedient. In here, this doesn't describe that at all. This, can't, this cannot be even a priest. This can't even be a prophet. I think we're, I have text here that is just gibberish written by somebody who does not know. I have no good beside you. You can't explain that truthfully. You really can't. Let's, let's take a look at the text here to say that where are, let's see, okay. Um, let me go back up to the beginning here. I have no good, what is the word good? Now they're describing the word good as bounty, enjoy, favorable, good 34 times, good deeds, good things, good things, happiness, nice things, pleasure, prosperity, um, welfare, and well. No. I have no good beside you. I can't even take a word from there to say that, um, let's see what the word uh, beside, um, because of you, I could use the word because, or against you, 569 times. Um, now there's got to be a longer list here. And I'm not seeing a multitude like 500 times of any of these words. These are just mainly one or two. And I'm looking for the one that has a larger number of the words and seeing about using those. Okay, concerning the 107. But still, concerning you, um, over. Okay, so therefore, that certainly doesn't fit. Um, and that's the problem with, well, this is actually something very good to learn when you're seeing how many different words they just want to substitute and to put things together so they can make a sentence. Um, so I have no good beside you. Look, I, I can't agree with that verse at all. I can't even correct that verse. I would have to be making that verse what I want it to say, and I'm not going to do that. That is not my job to do that. I'm here to try to find a format. Um and do that by starting to correct small little words like the saints who are in the earth. Now, what does the word saint show up as here? See, holy one, that's Jesus. You cannot have people being holy, even though they six times. They're using the word saint for this word twice. Okay, and here this word holy would be for Jesus. Um, um, like he sent, he will send his holy one or send his holy to Jesus, uh, holy to Jerusalem. But you cannot use holy for even a male. So this here, even the saints aren't even close to being. <laughs> Um, the most obedient to our creator. Uh, they aren't talking to our creator. The, the prophets are. They're um, being chosen by our creator to speak to the king and tell the people uh, the true truths 
sent to warn the people or the king. So the word saints who are in the earth, even if I remove the word saints and put in the word, and I have to say the righteous one, righteous righteous ones okay now those are the most obedient i'm adding here okay so i have to make this as an italic and it's all gray who are in the earth now this is not correct let me explain why this writer does not seem to understand how they understood life at that time according to our creator our creator has three heavens that he talks about or the hebrew people write about and that's where the birds fly in our heaven okay the stars motions that's moving kind of creates a mountain and as in the new american standard bible is the only bible that has the word north far north meaning the north star and then the stars kind of make concentric circles larger and larger to make this mountain. And that's his holy mountain. That's the second heaven. And our creator lives in heaven above the North Star. Once you understand that, you know where Jesus raised the bread and asked our creator for a blessing. So he turned to heaven. So you, you know he was talking, then he knew where the north was right in the daylight. And so that's, now you have an understanding of more than just he turned to heaven, okay? So the understanding of that, now what's, the, what's their understanding of what they, they walk on? They walk on the surface, so they give that a title as land. Underneath the land is ground, okay? Now, when our creator uh, tells Cain that his brother is calling to him from the ground, tells us in the earth, but it's not in the earth, but in another dimension of uh, like a heaven below or inside the earth. Uh, the ancient world called, uh, they all called it the nether world. Okay. So the thing here is, is in the earth is wrong because the earth is a lot of times used as the word ground. Let's take a look at that. Um, where is, well, I got to get used to this. Uh, Whoops, what verse am I at? Oh, yeah, right there with saints who are missing in the earth. I'm almost on top of it. See how they got the word ground, but they're using the word as earth. They can't use the word land and ground for the same thing. See, that's the problem. That they distinctively know that it's on the land is the surface that they're walking on. The ground is underneath. Our creator even describes uh, in the ground. So the, the place that's in the ground, this other dimension, is actually called the abyss. Now, if you have studied the text, you will know that the word shio is given there. And when I studied all the verses shio and all the verses abyss, I will tell you that the word Sheol is like, like a city <laughs> in the abyss. That's the best way I can describe it. But once you understand that the abyss is just like a f universe, but it is all deep and dark, has no light at all, and beings are just floating around in it. So if they gather together, that isn't like a city, so the use of Sheol is really not correct. Um, but being that I just used the word abyss instead of Sheol, meaning this place, like another dimension of, they would describe as a heaven, 
is in the ground. Okay, so I'd have to correct this as in Sheol or Abyss. Okay, but they're in the Abyss. Or who are in the Abyss. Who are, yeah, for the righteous ones who are in the Abyss. Now this would mean exactly like what our creator would say that uh, he hears uh, Abel calling to him from the abyss even though he's talking to uh, Cain in the land of the living okay to understand how they would use their words um, so that is now right because that's where they went up until the time of before Nathan then walks and tell or the, not walks over, he tells David that through his seed, his son's sons will have a king, will be born a king, and he will have a kingdom in heaven, and he will have his kingdom in heaven forever. That means, that text alone is the only text that says why we can enter into heaven or people will enter into heaven to live in heaven. There is no other book out there in the world that has this knowledge of why we go to heaven, okay? That changes everything. That means those that are in the abyss are going to be brought up into his kingdom and like i said in the beginning when jesus's body died on the cross they saw souls rising from the ground that's what i'm talking about so they were in the ground they're living in the ground until that time since that time everyone who dies then is either entered to heaven or sent into the abyss and jesus's second coming then that's the end of all man on earth, either right immediately their bodies will die and their souls will either go to heaven and the other abyss. And then after the abyss, I believe, I understand that all of them down there have had a chance since Jesus did have all of them rise up. There would be witnesses down there that where did they go? And then as more people died, well, they went to heaven because Jesus is in heaven now. If they are obedient down there through our Creator's um, compassion and mercy, they will come up into heaven. But the rest of them down there, there's going to be a new place for them called hell. Hell does not exist until Jesus' second coming in the end of man on earth. So... Now, let me get back here to the text, because I just want to try to, I'm trying to put the words so you understand uh, the knowledge that needs to be have this writer be saying these things correctly. They are the majestic ones in whom is all my delight. And this is not correct. Again, they aren't, they can't be majestic ones. Where is majestic? What is majestic as being said here? Uh, majestic, magnificent, masters, mighty, noble, power. None of them speak as, as they're righteous, that they were most obedient to our creator. So that tells me that the, these, again, need to be replaced or they would be gone. Now that I've taken out and I'm starting to put in my own words here, and whom are all my delight. This, I'm getting rid of this because that's my understanding of the truth. This is not correct. This cannot be correctly said. Okay. The sorrows of those who have bartered for another God. What do I mean the sorrows of those who have bartered for another God? Now, the word God here by this this coloring is what the New American Standard has put into the text in 1977. I believe 
Uh, it's close to 10,000 words they added it. So those who are saying every word in the Bible is correct, no, you don't understand that every Bible out there is not trying to be truthful. They're just changing words all the time, adding more words to confuse the text. They aren't trying to get back to uh, find the truth. They're just trying to make money. So um, the two best Bibles out there are only the King James, and I rate the New American Standard above it because of the concordance that I have can tear itself apart here and prove um, truthfully what kind of words or text should be said here uh, by the writer. Now, the words of those who have bartered for another God will be multiplied. <clears throat> who have bartered for another God will be multiplied. Why would another God, which we know does not exist, uh, multiply them? And why would they, Because just because of the sorrows? This text is not written by a righteous person who's obedient to our Creator. They would not be saying, who have bartered for another will be multiplied. That just is not truthful. Nor will I pour out their libations of blood, nor will I take their names upon my lip. Um, the sorrows of those who have borrowed, bartered, who have bartered for another God have multiplied. I'm just looking to see if I can make, if that, I just rejected that too much because this, this has to be separated from it and just say those words are just absolutely true, trouble. Those who bartered, who have doesn't mean that. Bartered is part of the word have. Who bartered for another God have multiplied. Um, not will be multiplied. And I will not pour out their libations of blood. Now, what is this libation of blood? You have to understand when our Creator is asking those to sacrifice something from them personally, like a ram or the two turtle doves for offering for their sin offering, that sacrifice is to kill that animal. But the object is that of the ram, the priest removed the muscles or the action of the sin, and then they take it in and hang it on the hooks on top of the altar. And as he's standing outside, that the meat is burned up, and it's the idea that the the sin, if it's to be forgiven, the smoke will rise up and it'll disappear. So our creator will forgive and forget, okay? And then the priest will go in and ask for atonement for their sin, and our creator will then tell that priest, yes or no, they are obedient or not. If they're not, they they are to go out and take him and take his whole family and send them out as an outcast, kick them right out of the promised land. Now that's where the word outcast comes from. So the thing here, you have to understand what onto this other God, what they do. Their, that altar, they kill the animal and the blood is rip, dripping off the edge that they collect that blood, and I don't know what they do with it, and then they pour it out, probably saying words to that foreign god. Okay? So, because we have words uh, from 
um, see Jeremiah, and that's these, these words down here, and how they will pour out their libation to her, and uh, their fathers did, their kings did, and the nobles and princes. Nobles probably means um, um, priest leaders and things like that. They didn't really have princes. Um, but the object is, is they were pouring them out to the queen of heaven. Now, who is the queen of heaven? Go over to this text here. We see in Malachi 2, verse 11, Judah. Now, this is the kingdom of Judah. So we're talking about many people living in the kingdom of Judah has married the daughter of a foreign god. The practice how to marry the foreign god is not known to you. I know, so let me explain it to you. They sit and meditate on certain moon days. Then she comes to them and they have, uh, the best I can say, like a, a sex with her because there's no contact, but they have the experience of uh, a release, but they don't release their seed from their body. This is how they married the daughter, okay? And that's the moon goddess that you hear about. Now, who is the foreign god? Well, the foreign god is sun, is the sun god Ra, okay? Now, I went through a psalm here earlier, how I showed that that writer was onto the sun god because he talked about how beautiful it was that he created this, uh, the moon and the stars, but he didn't create the sun. So that was unique to see that that is a writer that was putting in for their god, which Jesus does say in a verse, that they will write everything for their God. Okay, so the thing here is, is I'm just showing you, and this is the one that they're talking about in Revelation as well. So the thing here is, is they actually had three names for her at that time as well. Where are the three names? These are the three different times of the month that they get to see and they've given her names. And to say how she's related to the moon, uh, you can see from their images of old and idols from old, and they're with this moon on top of their head. And I'll explain this later when it comes time for that text to be explained. But here, and this is almost like the radiant of the sun and the moon, okay, from the sun god Ra, but this is not. Uh, an Egyptian form of the sun god Ra. But this is what the text is saying here in Malachi 2.11, the daughter of a foreign god. So this is what they were doing for, them, for her. So now this, he would... The righteous one who, is, who could actually say, I said to Wivy, like a prophet would not even let this come up in their mind, okay? Um, nor will I take their names. Notice how it's their names. The sun god, god's name and the goddess name upon my lips, okay? So this really has nothing to do with talking about anything related to our creator to teach us anything about um, the obedience to him. It's something that you should know what happens for those that at that time did. And I can show that. But the thing here is, is or I can tell you about that so you understand that. But there's no way that a writer trying to add the true text of what our creator does for him in here and if he's saying, I talked to Wivy, you are my, my Lord, um, there should be more of what was being said because an experience of, of prophecy by any of the um, prophets 
they're given a message. They don't get to talk to our creator except for asking him, I will make sure of this and how is this going to happen? And a lot of times our creator said, well, you don't understand, so eat this scroll. So and then, then they know that all the words they're supposed to say. But the object is, is that this person would not even say this to our creator as to say these things. So I, I'm pretty sure that I can safely say that text does not is not truthful. Why is my portion of my inheritance? No, he's not. You cannot have a portion of our creator. Um, even meaning that you are a portion of YV and I am the inheritance because he's put me in this nation. Uh, that just doesn't come about, okay? Uh, in my cup, you do support my lot. Um, my cup. We can forget that because it's not that it's a cup. He's a, our, like I was saying, our creator um, blesses a person to have a stable, good life to raise children, okay? And that their descendants will live on the inheritance after, according to the promise that if they obey the 12 commandments, they will never be... Uh, uh, sent away and taken into captivity the more they fell away from our creator then assyria come down and took him and then next uh like i showed you all of judah then went on to this goddess and then babylon come down and took them away so this is not really really correctly being said so that's not getting it here the lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. Indeed, my heritage is beautiful to me. This, I'm going to say, look, if I'm throwing away the, this text and this text has kind of got to belong with what I'm removing, I've got to say this is being removed. Why he counsels me in my mind, he instructs me. Can't be at night. So this person doesn't understand that it's during the day that he tests you. Uh, so this, I got to get rid of this word, and we know that this here is not truthful either. Whoops, uh, wrong one. Uh, I have set widely, continually before you, me. No, uh, you're supposed to be obedient before our him. So that's not being said right. Because he is at my right hand? No. They know that he is in heaven. Even though he is everything that's created. And he is... People don't have any understanding of everything is our creator. So there's nothing that can be um, escaped from him. He He's... He's using, uh, he's created us to have this choice whether we believe there is a creator and to obey him or not. It's that simple. So uh, because he is at my right hand, you cannot have our creator next to you, okay? So this is absolutely being said wrong. Doesn't understand that you can tell when somebody isn't speaking righteously about our creator, okay? It's, um, I mean, when you go through some of the text and see how beautiful the text really is, like this. Now that, you got to take a screenshot and read over and over and over and over because that is probably one of the highest writers that I have found yet. Skills. I'm really, really good. Those words are like the first sentence is a statement, and the best way to say that statement is those next two word, next two uh, words that I got a comma and then another, and then and it makes a very distinctive paragraph, and then the next one 
the same thing, but those two paragraphs now can make a larger paragraph. And then you look at the next style, they aren't. They're, they're starting this again, okay? And then it happens again. And the more and more you read that, you will find that the first group of words, the first paragraph, and the last words are like bookends to say that's a complete writing from that writer. That's what they would have wrote. That's what you should see in this text here. And this is not even coming close. I mean, that writer is praising our creator, okay, and telling you about Jesus and why they're living the way they are. This character here, uh, he said to her, I got to, I'm, I'm just going to call it. Uh, this is, that's fake. Uh, therefore, my heart is glad and my heart rejoices and, and my flesh also will dwell securely. This here is common knowledge for those that know our creator blesses them. Okay. So this is nothing to be said special. So this could be a piece from text that they stole from somebody else. This verse here, it has no connection to the words above or below that really can be truthfully said. So here, therefore my heart is glad. Yeah, um, my, my flesh. Now here, if I, my skin, okay, has to be. Because flesh is described as muscles in other places. So I can't use the word flesh as something, two different meanings. You either have to say my skin also lives securely or my body lives securely. But the thing here is, is that's what is supposed to happen. That's what our creator's promise was for the 12 commandments you obey them and that our creator was to bless your life uh he would keep the enemy away from you okay so well i don't want to get rid of that because that might still count i guess for you will not abandon my soul to sheol Neither will you allow your Holy One to undergo decay. You make known to me your way of life, your, your path for my life. But I'm seeing two verse, two verse pulling up here. In your presence is my fullness of joy. In your right hand there are pleasures forever. Now that sounds like that goofy writer above. So this, this is not there, but this text, what I've got here is two, two, two is really good. But to see here, this is going to be a four verse because this is, this would be like this and then this and this, but the prophecy of knowing this, we only have that from knowing Jesus. There is no other text in anywhere. And I've studied the text for 20, 30 years. And I mean, in-depth detail with this program. And I can tell you that this verse is always, I've always tried to look for that. Once I found it, there is nothing. Um, even the words from Isaiah, he freaks out that they're going to kill. He he gets the vision of Jesus being crucified, and he's terrified. He His words are just, when you read them when they're cleaned up, he is absolutely ticked off that they're going to betray him and they're going to kill him like they did on the cross, who is supposed to be their king in heaven and they in his own people did it to him or helped him do this to him that so uh undergo decay surely couldn't have been wrote by isaiah 
in any time from Isaiah forward, which there's only a few more prophets. Uh, Jeremiah, I believe, is next, but there could have been like uh, Uriah or uh, uh, another prophet at that time. Uh, and what I'm talking about, let me show you, because I've got all kinds of things to um, prove what I'm saying here. Uh, the land, oh yeah, right there, timeline. This is the best timeline you ever see about coming from anybody. And this is not judged as this is 17 years, this is 38 years. This is the events happening between these two right around their term of their 17 years. These things would happen here. So... What I'm talking about is way down here, this time here, Isaiah lives here. This king sent after Uriah to kill him, brought him back from Egypt. And then Jeremiah, we know, is here because Jeremiah is the one that this king talks to. And he says, it's too late, man. They're going to kill you. I mean, you're going to, I'll tell you what's going to happen to you. You're going to go down to the Jordan trying to escape and they're going to find you and they're going to kill your sons. And that's exactly what happens. But this here, uh, we know it's not those pro these prophets that would be saying about our uh, Jesus not undergoing decay. Now, all the other prophets did say he's coming. Uh, there's many of those. In fact, everyone after David, the prophets have to talk about Jesus. There's There's no other way that... Because that's, they know that, that they're now going to enter into heaven. So they're all anxiously like waiting for Jesus. So that's, there's no purpose of living on earth anymore. So they really want him to appear. But it's like three, four hundred years and they're starting to give up on the, the, the promise from our creator. But to have these words undergo decay that would be special okay um this here they're trying to tie to this word here because these words here uh therefore my heart is glad uh, uh heart does show the motion therefore my heart it would have to be get rid of the word therefore my heart is glad just say it and my glory rejoices, excuse me, your glory is to speak about our creator. See, they're using the word wrong here. Your glory is actually to speak about our creator. Uh, and that only comes from you speaking one-on-one -on -one with our creator. You can pick up a Bible. You can try to say that, okay, I'm looking for our creator. That's one thing. That's a good beginning. The second thing is, is throw the Bible out, start talking to him one-on-one. -on -one. Then he will send you to Jesus, and then you'll start understanding. Only because you're willing to start uh, putting our creator in your life, that happens, okay? So this text here, this, they're just trying to tie, my flesh will also live securely because they're going to tie it to this text here. So... This is the only text that we have from this song that I can say is actually true because my soul to Sheol is correct because I have to say it's the abyss. Okay, that is, needs to be cleaned up. But to actually find these words, to know that Jesus will not go under the decay because that is what happens. Um, how can this be written? Okay, how can this be written? This can only be written by a prophet that we do not know of after they are sent back to Jerusalem. Okay, or yeah, from Babylon as captives. <coughs> because once a Nebuchadnezzar wakes up from eating grass, he recognizes... Uh, the Hebrew creator did is the creator, the highest God as he knows it. He's the God of all gods type of thing. That's the only way he can relate it because his mind is he's he's 
filled with all these different gods. And then you see um, he actually ordered their whole calendar for Babylon to be according to um, the Hebrew calendar set by our creator. Um, so then he, uh, the next person that comes in line, um, I, because it's hard to say how Daniel's has this, or the king has this vision of this statue in these five different kingdoms. We know that the one of clay and silver is made, is, is Rome, because then it's in, and then it crumbles, because Jesus comes and that's it. Um, but who are these other three? Well, we know that from my understanding of cleaning up the text, the one who is actually protecting Nebuchadnezzar from everybody finding out that he's eating grass, um, he becomes the next king of Babylon. So he was the great head of the statue. And then the next part down is this king, but he's only ruling for a few years, and then it's Persia, okay? But it, this, this guy that's protecting him, um, there seems to be lost text, and it really gets to be me making my best guesses. But it's hard to put these this vision because the text is so distorted. Um, I know people have told you everything and to make that true, but I can't find them, okay? Just to let you know. I can't say that that's everyone happened this way. Um, because the way, I'm, I'm getting really far away. I think I'm going to end the text. video here. When I'm dating it, this text has to be after they come back because Isaiah surely told us how he's going to die. But this writer seems to know he's not going to go un undergo decay. So, and that would be talk about him returning. Rarest text that you're going to find that's truthful, but by who? Absolutely stunning. So, for you will not abandon my soul to, to, to the this, and that's the promise from David. A promise to David. Okay, so they're well aware of that. So this here is our Creator's understanding. Uh, will not abandon my soul to the abyss. But to say, neither will you allow your Holy One to undergo decay. Where did those words come from? Because they all want to tell me this was said by our Creator. Note to self in the video. I got to go over these words again and then clean them up here. Now, let me try to think where I was at when I went there. And I was talking about the, these pieces that I'm finding like this from getting, saying all this in 16 is not true, but this is true. I don't know who could write something like this because this piece is about Jesus, but not to undergo decay, which is meaning that someone was given, a prophet was given the vision that what we know about Jesus that's written, that the moment his body died, that the earth shook and the souls come up out of the graves. On the road where the graves were beside, where the graveyard was beside him or near him for them that were there witnessed this at the same time. This also means that this happens outside or right outside the house for our creator. When Jesus 
enters Jerusalem. The story says that he descends and then he ascends. Well, that is very true because the land does, I think it's from Bethany, as they're coming up the hills, that they come up and then they come down and then they go up to get to Jerusalem. And right there when you open up the gate, this is where our creator's house was established. This valley between the two hills, or the hills, is a graveyard. I'm just letting you know the story, but the thing here is is when the earth shook and the graves opened up, and not really truly graves opened up, but our Creator gave them the visual of souls ascending into heaven, so you know where the north star is at, so you know where all these souls rose up and then they went to the north star, uh, above the north star, into heaven. So that visual of understanding the last moments of Jesus before his body died, or the moments right after his body dies, this writer seems to know that. And that's why I'm saying that this text can only be written by somebody after the time of Isaiah. But Isaiah, like I said, is told that he he's fearful because he witnesses the death. He does not witness Jesus rising. So the thing here is we don't have any text anywhere that says this. And it all has to be said by our Creator. Because for you will not abandon our souls to the abyss... Um, I needed to make sure that the words are talking more than one because this is coming from our creator. So it would have been something that he was told to go and tell people that stay righteous because this is what's going to happen. So the thing here is, is never uh, will you allow your Holy One to undergo decay. In fact, I'm going to make these as if our creator said it, and then this way I will color these this here to say that, yes, we're talking about Jesus, but our creator said these. Neither will you allow your Holy One, and our creator would have said it different. I will not allow my Holy One to undergo decay, which means he knew that he was going to send them back to earth and he was going to witness. Uh, in the four books, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, there is stories that Jesus does reappear in back by Lake Galilee. Okay? So the thing here is, is this writer is a prophet. But who? It has to be after the time that they returned to Jerusalem. And that is, like I was saying, from when Nebuchadnezzar got, woke up eating grass, uh, he changed Babylon's calendar to the Hebrew calendar, which starts at the summer solace. And that's the first day of the year. And then it was later a king decided to send Daniel and the people back to reestablish because he gives Daniel the articles, or not the articles, the utensils that were used uh, in the atonement of their sin and to have the house for our creator rebuilt. And they even give them the money to do that. So the thing here is, is... Um, that, or these words, could only come from after that time. And that is the only piece that I know of that can say that. So to date that text right there that you see is very, very special. Because he made known to us... His path is for our life. I really wish that they wouldn't have destroyed this text around it. This is just stunning. Absolutely 
some of the best profound words lost, but we have a small portion of them that makes it so special when you understand how to correct the text, how to highlight and understand who's saying what and who said it. It could only come from a prophet. So...